So this should be a quick video to discuss the user space in CPM and how to copy files in between uh, user partitions or user whatever you want to call them, user folders. Partitions and folders is a bad name. The concept in CPM is a disk can have multiple users. And there's users 0 to 15 and each user can't see the other user's files. So I've got the uh, CPM floppy mounted in the A drive here. Let me actually get back to user 0. There's the command user 0. And we can see the files on the, on the disk for user 0. If I do a user 1, there'll be no files. User 2, no files, etc. Because the only files on this disk are under user 0. User 0 is the default. So on this machine, I have three more floppies mounted. I have B, I have C, and uh, B, C, and D. Why am I doing E? I don't know. And I need to copy all of those to a hard drive uh, area. So if we go to I, I happens to be the hard drive on this machine. The default here is the user zero space, and we can see that uh, WordStar is sitting here in user zero. I could potentially, let's go ahead back here and run a stat. And we can see that the I, the hard drive, has got 2,754 blocks available. It's got a lot of storage. The problem is, is we don't want to put all the files at the root of the disk here. Remember in CPM 2.2, there's no folders. There, there, there's no partitioning of the drive by default. So the way to deal with this is you can at least break the drive up into 16 unique pieces using the user command. So from here, if I go A0 pip, I can run the pip command. And you can see the prompt comes up there because I'm in the user 0 here on the I drive. And because it's user 0, we see the user 0 space on the A floppy and we can run pip. However, if I go to user 15 and now I try to run A pip, what I get is I don't know what pip is. And if we look at drive A, well, it's looking at the user 15 space on drive A. How do we fix this? So let's go back to user 0. Let's go back to drive A. I'm going to run pip here. We see the prompt come up. I'm going to hit uh, return to exit pip. Now at this point, pip is still in memory. Nothing's overwritten it. I can now go to the I drive. Pip is still in memory, not an issue. I can change to user 15 in the I drive. Pip is still in memory as it was before. And then I can do a save is the command. I 58 blocks seems like a reasonable size to me. I've seen people claim other numbers. I'm not sure the exact size, but 58 works for me. And pip.com. So what's happening here is we're going to save the contents of memory starting, I believe, at address 100 hex for 58, 200, 200, I don't remember, blocks to a local file called pip.com. And we'll now have a local copy of pip. That I can just now type pip and run. Now the secret here uh, in pip becomes this. I'm going to say the local directory on i equals the b floppy. I want to copy all the files. And here's the magic. Bracket g0. Close bracket. That bracket g0 tells pip that for the b drive, go to the user 0 space, not the user 15 space where we're currently set. And if I execute that, you can see it copying the files off of b. This is the BDSC, uh, my version of the distribution, the one I muck around with. Uh, that's what's being copied. It occupies three floppies in this configuration to get it transferred over to a hard drive. Let this copy. So again, it, it, you, know, you can look at the documentation, understand the user better. There's nothing I've ever found in the documentation that talks about that bracket G0 bracket that I've been able to identify. So now I can do I drive, default is user 15 because that's who we set it to, equals the C drive. I want to grab all the files. And again, I need to get them from the G0 space. An uppercase, lowercase G0 shouldn't make a difference. We did uppercase before. Here's a lowercase. Again, it's going to the user 0 space on that uh, C floppy. Copying the files across. And then we can say local folder again equals B, all files, and G0. And what did I do wrong? A, B, it should be C. I, you know, I don't know why I keep doing that. 
pip I colon equals ABCD colon. I have no idea why I keep wanting to do E there. That's just so weird. I think it's because of the way the drives are laid out on my Win 10 machine. So when this is done, we've managed to copy all of the files off those three floppies to you know the same user space on the hard drive here. Hit enter to exit pip into a directory. We've got all the files here. Booted the machine. By default, we're in the user zero space. In the user zero space, we can see CPM. Uh, you, you know, this is where the machine, uh, you know, was booted from. I can run pip here. We see the pip prompt come up. Hit enter. Pip is still in memory. It hasn't been overwritten. I can go to whatever hard drive or whatever drive I want to copy to. I can go into a user space. In this case, we'll do user 14. I can then do a save. 58 pip.com and that'll say save what's in memory to a file name pip.com I can run pip here now and I can say this local drive on A with local user equals A colon all files for user 0 and and you know by default when to the A drive it's going to look for files assigned to user 14 because that's the default that we set you know with the user 14 command and this will copy everything over to this partition. What additional note here? Why did I use 58 when I did that? Save uh, 58 pip.com. Where did the 58 come from? Let me go ahead and show you where that 58 comes from. Uh, we're in the user space zero. We can see that pip is here in this directory it's in the fourth column second down from the top if I do a stat pip.com it'll show me how many records uh, pip occupies and that's 58 you can see the records there RECS and that's why I saved 58 records out when I did the save command so I'll say 58 pip.com so that's why there's a, uh, this is where that 58 came from I know I mentioned earlier in the video I didn't remember but this was it so anyhow uh, I think with that said, this really does finish up this video, and I hope to see you in a future one.